All right, hello everyone. Um, just gonna double check, we are recording. Awesome. So uh, this is the last week um, that we are backlogged on going over the uh, newsletter. Uh, starting in December, I should be able to cover it as I release it. So it'll be um, uh, more up to date, I suppose. <laughs> Anyways, this is edition number four for November. So I picked a great uh, autumn painting here with tons of different colors, red, yellow, and green predominantly. Um, and you can see that the sky is sort of half um, covered with blue uh, as the remnants of summer and then half covered with, with clouds, kind of a transistory period between uh, fall and winter, right? Or I guess summer and winter, fall being in between the two. <laughs> um, and then for the quote slash poem, I chose a selection from John Donne's Elegy, The Autumnal. Uh, it says, No spring nor summer beauty hath such grace as I have seen in one autumnal face. Um, and yeah, who can deny that looking at this uh, Thomas Cole painting. Uh, now Thomas Cole was a, uh, actually born in Lancashire, I don't know, somewhere in uh, England, and then moved to the Americas where he did most of his work. Um, I wanted to show a few other of his paintings as well because they're uh, pretty cool. So we have here, um, the Titan's Goblet, um, just, yeah, I don't, it's obviously not realistic, it's like some giant cup in the middle of the mountains but it's pretty cool and then we have here the um the course of empire uh i don't know i didn't really research what these paintings were about but just just to show you that he did lots of like large sort of landscape style paintings oh and it changes to something else <laughs> anyways um and then this last one here the oxbow which i think is referring to how tightly this river curves around um and creates this little um dot in the middle there it's pretty cool um, and this one also, uh, speaking of sort of a transition between two scenes, we see on this side it's very sunny and sort of uh, like pastoral, right? And on this side we have like a gnarled tree and the, the rain and dark clouds are coming. So uh, pretty interesting contrast here, especially the foreground as well being wild and the background being cultivated. Um, set, kind of showing the contrast between um, man's power over nature versus like the raw uh, power of nature over man. Uh, so interesting. Um, <laughs> this <laughs> so the, the 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 quote we went over is by John Donne, right? He I believe is like 17th 18th century ish um and I should double check that. Anyways, um a while ago <laughs> and he was very famous for his metaphysical poetry um and his sermons. Um did a, he was very prolific, wrote a lot of stuff. And this is a pro portrait of him as a young man. <laughs> and just look how moody and like emo he looks. It's it's so funny. <laughs> I, I got a kick out of that anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh now the main sort of uh, piece of writing that uh, was in the newsletter for this month. I didn't really include a lot for this month. I think I was kind of rushed. I did it like last minute, which is unfortunate. I should have put a couple extra pieces in here. This is like the main thing I wrote, um, and it's about um, this guy named Horatio, shoot, I'm forgetting the last name, Horatio Spafford, okay? Now, you might recognize that name, uh, especially if you are a Puritan slash Protestant. Uh, he's a very famous uh, hymn uh, writer, um, and his story is pretty interesting, so I'll give you a qu quick rundown. Uh, basically, um, he's born in the States, and he... Uh, has it makes a life for himself, right? Marries, has a bunch of kids, um, ha makes good investments. He's kind of like set. He's pretty set. Um, he works as a lawyer. Um, then he bought this place downtown um, to, you know, like real estate, pretty common investment. Um, then 1871, um, Great Fire Chicago, burns his in uh, investment to ashes, right? So he's kind of derelict. Uh, and then two years later, um, the young family kind of gets get it back on their feet and they plan a trip to Europe. Um, now Horatio, the father, has to stay back for a bit. Um, fix some business things and he'll come when he's ready. So he sends his wife and daughters ahead and um, Unfortunately the ship I'm not exactly sure what happens if it, it hit another ship or capsized or what 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 you have or What have you <laughs> that's what I meant to say? <laughs> um, anyways, he just receives a telegram from his wife that says saved alone um, So all his daughters are dead um, So he rushes over there um, to meet up with her um, and on his way there he the ship passes by the site of where the other ship went down and he's just like reflecting on the fact that he lost all his kids and he pens the, the most famous hymn of one, one of the most famous hymns of all time it is well with my soul and if you've heard that hymn it's very beautiful um and so 
it kind of he's kind of like a modern day Job, right? Where he loses all his possessions and uh, his family, and he still is like trusting God uh, through that, which is a really inspiring story. So. Uh, yeah, the next uh, little piece here is by a guy I've referenced before. His name is Ted Gioia, which I think is an Italian last name. Not really too sure. Um, he uh, is a cultural critic. He has a newsletter and writes essays every couple of weeks, I think. And he posts some predictions on AI. Now, <laughs> most people don't really have a good grasp on AI. They think it's like they think either it's going to do nothing, um, or it's going to like have like doomsday scenario where like robots are, like like eating people and like like terrorizing cities <laughs> um, like a doomsday like nuclear scenario and um he kind of like steers the course between Scylla and Charybdis there like there's <laughs> it's neither of those things are going to happen so here's the article um there's 11 sort of takeaways that he he gives um the main ones I want to focus on are this first one here where he just says that like you know it's not going to be a doomsday scenario like calm down um uh the next one is that where is it Oh yeah, this one here. So I think in a previous newsletter we talked about um, a model collapse, where when AIs are trained on their own data, they kind of start to spit out gibberish, right? So that they can't like make themselves smarter. Um, you need human input to like correct, course correct. Um, so uh, it kind of is like a natural um, uh, boundary that AI can't cross. So it's not going to just all of a sudden get just crazy smart overnight. Um, um, I don't I don't think he mentions it. Maybe he mentions it explicitly here that AI is kind of like a failed investment. Like people get so hyped up about it, but the amount of profit and revenue it actually generates for these like big venture capital companies is like not up to snuff. Um, so uh, yeah, there's going to be, I'm not exactly sure how the market works out, but they're, the, these um, companies are going to have to start scraping things together and doing something to like um, keep their shares up. All right. Um, but it's not like a huge profit generator, at least not yet. Um, th this one as well, the actual winners will be holistic thinkers and empathetic individuals with human skills, right? Because AI cuts out a lot of the menial work and it kind of allows people to um, uh, increase their output. And so if you are doing gibberish and you use AI, you're just going to make more gibberish, right? Whereas if you are somebody who has like good writing, um, a good sense uh of what's going on in the world, you have your finger on the pulse of the culture, then that type of person, um, their voice is amplified through AI. So it doesn't just make you magically smart. Um, and the last thing here I found interesting was this number point number 10. And it shows a graph between mined diamonds versus lab-grown diamonds. Because if you're just thinking like from first principles, you might think, well, lab-grown diamonds are infinitely cheaper, so then why don't they people just stop buying mine diamonds, right? It doesn't even make sense. The mining industry for diamonds should just collapse. And yet it doesn't, right? People pay extra for mine diamonds because they, it's like a status symbol, right? People want authenticity. They want the real thing. And as this goes for AI as well, like the content on the internet, as it, more and more of it's generated by AI, we're going to have a crisis in authenticity or, or, or um, like genuineness, right? And so it's going to be difficult, uh, increasingly difficult to tell if something's generated by AI or not. Um, and even in terms of jobs, like you could have an AI do a job, but it's going to be like a status symbol for companies to hire real people because um, people want authenticity, right? They don't want to talk to a robot. Um, so yeah, uh, great article from Ted. Uh, this edition also contains my first short story, Tristan. Um, I'm dabbling with writing fiction. Um, it's fun. I like it. Um, this one's just about a dude. And um, he goes to a Thanksgiving dinner and kind of has a reflection on life. And um, yeah, I can't really say too much more about it. Um, I haven't really read a lot of short stories. Um, the style of this one is heavily influenced by um, Flannery O'Connor, uh, which I've been reading recently, like one, one short story a week from her. So the, the kind of window into a person's life that kind of ends um, without any definite conclusion, that kind of style is is where I'm getting that from. Uh, anyways, also wrote an essay this month. I'm trying to do one of each, one fiction, one essay a month, plus the newsletter. Um, so this, the essay this month isn't really an essay. It's just kind of a summary of a short book I read from C.S. Lewis um, called Reflections on the Psalms. Um, I just have a little blurb about each chapter, um, as you can see. Um, it's It was a good book. Um, more of a Bible study vibe than like a, a novel, but it was I enjoyed it. Um, also going to do a word of the month from now on. <laughs> the word of the month this this month is Winkle Pickers, which I chose purely for comedic value. Um, it's when the the, sh the dress shoes kind of have this long pointed uh, end, which I think um, 
originated with like medieval. I was gonna say jesters, but I think it would, would peasants as well wore them. I'm not too sure. Anyways, it has medieval origins, um, which is uh, funny. <laughs> Winkle pickers. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, that's the end of the newsletter. So that's number four. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Please subscribe, and I will see you soon. When's December? Couple weeks. See you then.